Okay, welcome friends again. Um, now we're doing uh, chapter 0 0.7. Um, whoops, I didn't click over. Uh, and so zero po chapter 0 0.7, and so here we go. Uh, and this one is the quotients, the division between a positive and a negative number, uh, and that's negative, and the division between a positive and a positive is a positive, and the division, quotient is division, product is multiplication, sum is add, and difference is the one we haven't seen, maybe, is subtract, and so anyway, quotient is a negative divided by a negative. So the quotient between a negative and a negative, dividing two negative numbers, you get a positive. Um, and then some little bit of notation. I can write division like this, A divided by B with the division sign. So that's looking like that, that simple. But I can also write it as a fraction. Uh, notice which one goes in the numerator. The first one goes in the numerator. Uh, and so that is your, uh, what you're uh, dividing into, right? Um, and then what about zero? Uh, zero divided by something that's not zero. So if I try to do zero divided by something that's not zero, that's equal to zero. And sometimes people say, why is that uh, not zero? Why is that equal to zero? And, um, and I'll, uh, I'll show you both of these, why, the why. And then something that's not zero divided by zero is undefined. And if you're wanting to know why that is, I'll tell you as well. And so I'm gonna give you the example uh, of why that is. I'm gonna flip my paper over here because I'm not gonna have room to write it. But let's say that we were doing zero divided by five. And I'm gonna say that I don't know what that is, okay? Well, uh, division is based on multiplication and two, excuse me, that's not a two, six divided by two is equal to three because two times three equals six. And so I just want you to look at this that I've got. Well, I said, what is it? I don't know. And so I'm gonna do the same because, and so you notice these two equal that one when I'm multiplying, right? Because five times the question mark equals zero. So I've rewritten this as a, as a multiplication, right? So this is a times now. And five times what equals zero? And the only thing that it could be is zero. Five times zero equals zero. And so that's the reason this has to be zero, right? So, um, and so same thing with the other. Let's say that I had seven divided by zero. And if you're wondering, well, why is that undefined? Um, I don't understand. And so we'll say, let's say that it's question mark. And so with the same idea that we had here, that would mean that zero times the question mark equals seven, right? So there's my crazy question mark. We don't know what it is. And I'll ask you, when you multiply uh, zero times what number do you get seven? And you might be thinking, there isn't a number when I multiply it by zero that I get seven, because everything I multiply by zero, every number that I multiply by zero gives zero back as the answer. So none of them give seven. And that is the reason that we say that this is undefined. And it's vocabulary, the undefined is important. So people say, you know, can I use a word that I made up myself? And the answer is no, you need to use the mathematical word that goes with division by zero, which is undefined. Now they don't worry about this to a little bit later. So you notice that when I have here, it was zero divided by something that's not zero and not zero divided by zero. And I didn't worry about zero divided by zero. And I, I just wanna mention it. Um, it's something that you'll definitely be seeing in Math uh, 1A zero divided by zero. It's a different critter altogether and our book doesn't worry about it, but just 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 so that you're, well, we're here, while we're here, right? So uh, doing that same trick that we had on the two times three, right, is six. So this would be zero times the question mark, zero times the question mark equals zero. And uh, what could the question mark be then? So here we said it can be nothing. Here we said it has to be zero, right? What are we saying that the question mark could be here? Zero times what equals zero? 
So if you're saying it could be anything, you're right. And um, they use math vocabulary for that, and what they use is the word indeterminate. And so it's indeterminate. Zero divided by zero is indeterminate. Okay, so we're gonna give a try to some of these problems over here. Find the following quotients. And um, so we have here on number two, 10 divided by negative five. I see that my um, printer got a little sketchy uh, there on its drawing. But this is a positive divided by a negative is a negative. And 10 divided by five is two. So that's negative two. And then this one, when you divide it, um, 28 doesn't go into four, right? So I'm gonna have to have this written as a fraction. But it will reduce. A negative divided by a negative is a positive and four goes into 28 seven times, right? So I can, I can, a lot of people like to write this as negative four, I'm gonna write this, over negative four times seven, right? And so um, you don't have to write it like that, but some people like to write it like that. And then they say four divided by four is one, right? So a negative divided by a negative is a positive, four divided by four is one, and then I still have the seven. And so right here I did four divided by four is one. So this is one seventh. Um, this is one that really tricks people all the time. And so this is a bonus example. Like if I had negative three over negative five, they say, well, negative the three and the five don't reduce with one another. So there's nothing that you can do, but you can reduce the signs. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. And so it's better to write this as positive three fifths and so you would want to reduce the signs there. And, um, and then this is number 12, zero divided by 17. And which one is that one? Do you guys remember? It's zero, right? And 17 divided by zero is, yeah, undefined. Now I wish that the calculator said undefined. I tried to get a job at the Casio, right? Uh, so that I could tell them some things, uh, but, um, a lot of calculators won't even do the 17 divided by zero. And, um, and so, and there's two ways that we can do the division on here. So we can go zero divided by 17. So I'm doing this first one. And I've changed the notation there, which is zero, which is what we got. And I changed it from the fraction notation into the division notation like I had here. But the calculator will also do it on the division. So this is the division bar on there, or the fraction bar. So when I hit that, I can do the zero in the numerator upstairs in the numerator. And then I can go down and put in the 17. So zero divided by 17, and that's going to give me zero. And the, the calculator will just as well do the 17 over zero but no one's taught it undefined. It says math error is what it says. So, um, and the vocabulary that goes with that is undefined. There's actually a lot of math errors that can be made. Uh, we're gonna be seeing some other math errors uh, in the class uh, later on. And, um, and so, and the math errors are given different, gif different, different vocabulary to go with them. Okay, so uh, now we have this one, negative seven over nine divided by negative one over six. And so when I divide a negative divided by a negative, I know the answer is gonna be a positive. Uh, if I rewrote this, remember that when you divide a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. So this is negative seven ninths. And then I'm gonna turn this into a times. And then the reciprocal, all you do is flip it, six, over one. And you notice that when it was a, a negative divided by a negative, the answer was going to be a positive. And look now, a negative times a negative, and the answer is going to be a positive, right? And um, I can reduce the six and the nine. Um, and so three goes into nine, and three goes into six two times. And so that's going to give me a seven times two is 14 in the numerator. Remember, we already decided it was positive, over three in the denominator. So it's the fraction four over three. And it's perfectly okay to leave a fraction, um, an improper fraction, um, as a fraction. And it's okay to write it as a mixed number as well. 
Uh, it depends on what your what application you're going to be using it for, maybe. Our book typically uses it as a fraction. They leave it as a fraction. And so I won't have to go, and if you just took arithmetic class, your teacher in arithmetic might have said, write that as a mixed number. And I'm okay with that as well. And so in algebra, we typically leave it as a reduced fraction. So there it is, a reduced fraction. So we got a little order of operations going here. We need to multiply negative five times negative five. That's positive 25 divided by negative 15. And now these would reduce with one another because five goes into the numerator five times and five goes in the denominator three times. So this is five over negative three. And you don't typically write your negative sign in the denominator. So if you have a over negative b, that's kind of like what we have here, you can write that as negative of a over b. And that's what the back of the book's gonna do on this. They're gonna write this as negative five over three. And, um, and so very good. Someone was coming in the room and so I was excited about that. I think, I think that um, I'm not home alone anymore, which is good. I'm happy about that. So uh, this one here, uh, order of operations would tell me I need to do the numerator of the, fr uh, of the fraction first. And so I'm going to do that multiply because I have 27 subtract 2 times negative 4. So I'm going to do that multiply 2 times negative 4. And uh, when I do that, that's negative 8. So I have 27 subtract, and then I, I just did that multiply negative 8. And um, in the numerator, I have subtract of a negative, so that's a, really an add, 27 plus 8, which I think might be 35. And I've kind of been ignoring the denominator now because the order of operation tells me work on the numerator until you get it to one number. And I, I didn't I really leave the denominator. I'm going to go get it now, right? Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. And it just didn't take as much work, so I'm going to put that over here. And now I just need to reduce that. So I have that same reducing I had over here, right, of the negative can go out to the side. Right? And I have uh, 35 and 15. 5 goes into both of them. 5 goes into 35 7 times, and 5 goes into 15 3 times. So this is going to be equal to negative of 7 over 3. And I know that I could write that as a mixed number, uh, but I don't have to. And so it's a, this one over here could have been written as a mixed number too, but I don't have to. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it there. And then on uh, section 7, we have a, another problem, problem 92 down here. And um, it's a word problem with, uh, let's see, we got if eight people invest $500 each in a stamp collection, and after a year the collection is worth $3,800, how much did each person lose? So there's a number of ways of doing this one. Um, you can sit back and watch the hummingbirds out the window. That's what I've got going on. I wish I had a way of showing you um, these guys because they're quite the characters. Um, and um, uh, there's, But there's a number of ways of going. So if you thought of a different way of going than me. So normally people in class would be yelling out what they think. And the good news is, is that you'll be able to do homework and you'll be able to yell out to yourself what you think would be the uh, best way of going. So one way that people will tell me is we'll find out how much altogether that they invested. And you would have to multiply $500 times eight, right? And I hear I've told you I'm not gonna use a little X for times, right? <laughs> And so when I do that, they've invested um, $4,000. Do you guys agree? Okay. And now it's worth $3,800. And so this is how much that they uh, bought the stamp collection for as a team of eight. And then this is now the worth of the stamp collection, $3,800. So how much did they lose as a as a uh, as a group, right? Um, and do you guys agree that I would take away thirty-eight hundred dollars right here, right? And this is two hundred dollars, but this is how much they lost. Um, 
they lose. That's not the right word. There, that's how much they lost. They lost $200, and that's how much it's asking, right? How much did they lose? But it didn't ask how much did they lose as a group. This is the group of them. They lost $200, um, all eight of them, and so they no one person lost $200. Uh, we would divide that by eight, right? And see, let's see, that's two and four. Conveniently, it goes nicely. Um, they lost, lost $25 each. Do you guys agree? So we did a lovely job on that. There were other ways of doing that, of course. Um, so um, that is section 0 0.7. Uh, I'll warn you, I guess spoiler alert, if you start doing some homework, um, there's a problem in there that doesn't say if eight people, it says you and three friends invest, blah, blah, blah. And so many people say, okay, we're gonna times that number, they kind of try to do it the same way, by three. But it says you and three friends. So how many really people are investing? Uh, and so be really careful, four, four people, right, are investing. So be really careful with that reading on that problem. So I, a little spoiler alert. Okay, um, and so that was section 0 0.7.